Um, this is part of a small series of videos for domestic customers that have either just placed an order or are looking at placing an order with some common questions answered and what you can expect. Um, we're a quality focused company and we only offer the highest quality N-type all black panels made by Jinko and the advanced solar edge inverter system complete with optimizers. Previously, we've offered a whole variety of different solar panels to our customers, but deliveries have become so unreliable and constantly damaged shipments have encouraged us to purchase panels in bulk container quantity and the engineers load up at the start of a day from our storage facility and bring them to you on the day. Standard roof mounting is what we call on roof and the system is manufactured by K2 in Germany. I'd always recommend on roof mounting due to better ventilation of the panels and keeping the main roof covering intact underneath. The panels are only 30 mil thick and they only protrude about 100 mil up from the top of the roof. There are some horror stories about in the media about pigeons nesting under solar panels. In reality, this is actually very rare. I would say we've been doing this for 12 years and I've only seen less than 1% of installations where pigeons have become a problem. For this reason, we don't offer pigeon meshing as standard because more than often it's not required. If you do wish to have pigeon meshing, this can be quoted as an extra, but please advise well in advance. There's also a mounting system that recesses the panel into the roof that we call in-roof. We use a system called GSE, uh, which basically has in-roof trays. We do not recommend retrofitting this on existing roofs. It can be done, but you end up removing all of the protective roof covering and you're going to sacrifice both efficiency and how the panels generate, because they've got less ventilation, and how efficient your property is with the tiles or slates removed and replaced with the thin layer of glass that is your solar panel. On new build properties, this is easier to fit prior to the roof covering being fitted. It's still worth making sure that insulation values are, are sufficient and from a productivity perspective, on roof is always superior. Solar tiles are not currently available and what there is are so inefficient and expensive and don't work with solar edge so that we don't fit them. The solar edge inverter system we use, it consists of the inverter, which does the DC to AC conversion, and optimizers, which are fitted behind every panel. Note that the solar edge monitoring system comes as standard and is free for life. You'll be given access to the app after your installation is complete, and we too are able to monitor it to make sure everything's working as it should do. Please note that the panel level access is for professional analysis and this is not something that we add to your own personal app. Please also note that as standard, the inverter is not able to show what your property is doing for import and export in relation to your solar. In order to do this, you need a current transformer and Modbus meter adding to the installation at the origin of the supply. It's a great device if you want that added le level of visibility, but it doesn't come as standard unless you're having a solar edge battery. The solar edge system can be the start point of a whole home automation platform. And there are a number of things in the brochure, such as their EV charger, battery, relays, and plugs, which can be added or expanded in the future, but which don't come as standard. Please note that to take advantage of the monitoring side of Solar Edge, we do need either a hardwired internet connection or Wi-Fi to connect it to. If you have a 4G connection where you use your mobile phone to access your internet, this will not work. It is possible to either not use the monitoring, the system works fine without it, or add a GSM module for an additional cost. That's like having a phone SIM in the inverter. You are permitted 3.68 kilowatts of inverter per phase. Most domestics are single phase, but there are situations where it can be doubled or tripled in two and three phase installations without asking permission from the grid. This is enough for most customers and it's perfectly standard practice to oversize the physical solar panels to the inverter 
allow you to have an even larger system that will generate you more power throughout the whole year. Oversizing with SolarEdge permits 200% and in some instances with multiple orientations it can go even higher. Whilst the inverter being sized at 3.68 kilowatt means that this is the most it can physically generate at any one time, it does mean that you'll be generating more for longer in the day and for more of the year. It is always sensible to focus on your annual generation rather than the live maximum amount that you can generate. If you want to go larger than this, we can make an application to the grid for you, but please bear in mind this is a 12 week process and there is no guarantee that it will be accepted. Your salesperson will look at your electric supply when doing the survey and generally discuss with you where your inverter and other equipment will go. We use professional electricians for your installation and we will always do our best to conceal your cabling and hide everything from view wherever possible. Just bear in mind that we do need to physically route cables between the solar, the inverter and back to the mains, so there needs to be a route somewhere. Wherever possible, we try to use a spare way on your consumer unit. Um, but do bear in mind that if you do not have a spare way, we may need to advise to either add another small consumer unit or give you the opportunity to upgrade your consumer unit while we're there. This can be quoted for if you're interested, please just let us know in advance. If you're having a Tesla power wall, the backup gateway has a consumer unit that can be built in the bottom of it to supply the solar and the battery, so a consumer unit upgrade may not be necessary. Please note we do not do pre-installation visits. We find it much more beneficial for you to discuss your requirements on site, on the day, with the specific engineer that's going to be carrying out your installation. Your scaffolding typically goes up a few days before your installation and comes down a few days afterwards. This is to take into account any issues that could cause unforeseen delays like inclement weather. Your deposit payment is 25% of the overall installation and for your peace of mind that's underwritten by an insurance policy. In the event that you are having a part of the installation which isn't in stock, perhaps a Tesla Powerwall or immersion controller, the balance of what has been done will become due and the remainder when the outstanding items are fitted. If you are having a battery or EV charger added to your installation, I'm going to go through this on a separate video specifically relevant to customers that are having these items. There is also going to be a video for post-installation so you know what to expect then. Thank you very much.